slugs are very susceptible to drying out. So one of the key things for all of the species is that they will only be really active when there's sufficient water in the environment. The soil needs to be damp for them to start moving. If they find themselves in dry conditions, they don't die, they just simply stop moving and they go quiescent and you won't get any damage to your crops in very dry conditions. If those dry conditions last for a long time, then the slug inevitably might succumb to drought and might die, but they've adapted a number of ways of getting around that. When the field slug lays its eggs, the hatchlings that come from those eggs don't all grow at the same speed. This means that if you're actually looking at slugs in the field and you've got some big ones and some small ones, you cannot say the big ones are older than the smaller ones. They could be brothers and sisters at exactly the same age. When the slug gets large enough, it is able to start reproducing in its own right and start laying eggs. So yes, large slugs are likely to be more reproductively active. The small slugs take longer to get to that stage and therefore from a single batch of eggs you might have some slugs going through their life cycle quickly and others taking many, many months to go through that. The other thing that we've discovered, and although we need more evidence to sustain this finding, is that when you use a biological control such as nematodes or slug pellets, you can remove all of the active slugs from an area and within a very short space of time more slugs will appear again. So any attempt at control is only a, a temporary thing. Some people think that, well, are those slugs moving in from the surrounding landscape? And yes, they, they will do that, but they don't move very far. Usually within a cropping season, you're not going to get slugs moving from the edge of a field right into the center. And what our research showed was that there seemed to be a lot of slugs present in the soil and only at any one time, only a small proportion of them are active. So it, it's a little bit like the tip of an iceberg. You've got on the surface a number of slugs being active, feeding on the crop, feeding on the pellets. You can control those. But once they have been killed or removed from the system, then more slugs will eventually recruit it into that population from whatever was down below the soil surface. And that might be, happen within two or three weeks. Control really needs to be focused at the time when the crop is at its most vulnerable. Many farmers will be aware that they've got areas of the farm which are more susceptible to slug problems and very often that seems to be tied down to soil moisture conditions. Where we've looked at the numbers of slugs across a field we find that there are areas where the numbers are high, areas where the numbers are low and to some extent that is, again, linked to soil moisture. If the slugs are in the soil, then like all soil animals, they can be very much affected by cultivation activities. And really the, the first line of defense against slugs as pests would be to cultivate. The problem then is that lots of cultivation goes against many of the guidelines in terms of conserving soils or minimum cultivation. So, Cultivation activities will reduce the numbers of slugs. That might be possible without making big changes to the soil structure. So simply going over with a roller to compress the soil and, and indeed compress the slugs. It's very difficult to get an estimate of how much those activities reduce the numbers of slugs. But we think that cultivations could probably knock the numbers of active slugs down by about 30 or 40 percent. So it's not a perfect solution, but it helps. In the longer term, you're going to find slug problems are worse after certain crops. And most people will be well aware that after a crop that's got a dense canopy like oilseed rape, you get lots more slug problems because it provides them with shelter. Deep beneath the, the canopy, there's usually a lot of moisture around and they like eating oilseed rape. The downside to that is that if you've had oilseed rape, you've got to perhaps spend more time thinking about soil conditions, soil preparation, removing trash or incorporating trash so that you reduce the numbers of slugs in the field before the next crop goes in.